Hello, if you've landed here, please watch the previous videos linked in the description box below to upskill on Tableau from scratch. In this video, we will be covering the following topics. Let's begin. We'll first cover an example of a date calculation. We'll then move on to string calculation and then the number calculation followed by type calculation and finally level of detail calculations. So as we go along, I will explain more in depth for each of these um, topics that we see. So let's quickly go and open Tableau Desktop. So upon doing that, let me connect to my sample superstore data. Double click on sample superstore. Click on the orders table as always. As soon as I double click, I will get a preview and I will click on go to worksheet. Okay, so um, now that we're on the visualization screen, let me bring in order date and sales. Let me put it in a tabular format so that the numbers are visible. So here we see the different sales for each year. So we see it for 2016, 2017, 2018 and 2019. Now, if I want to hard code in a calculation, my sales for the year of 2018, for example, how would I go about doing that? Right? So let me create a calculation for that. So let me right click. Click on create calculated field. Let me begin. If so, we will make use of logical calculation. Like I said, these are the different types of calculations that I'm actually covering in today's session. Um, so if we need the syntax for if, we can come here and see it. But what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to hard code and say logically, if my year of order date is equal to 2018, then show my sales, okay? So whatever my calculation here is, it's going to be 2018 sales. So here I will say if sum of sales is equal to, actually not sum of sales, it will be year of order date. So if you notice, as soon as I started typing year, a function started appearing. But if I need to know, for example, I knew that there is a function known as year, but if I need to know all the functions that are within date calculation that I could use, I will select date in the drop down and then notice all of these functions. Okay. I could calculate the same thing in more than one way. So the same or different functions could help you achieve the same thing. But let's go through each of these options to see what we can achieve with each of these functions. So for example, date add, what is date add, right? So there is a syntax date add, which gives you date part and interval and date. Now let me walk through the description. It adds an increment to the specified date and returns the new date. So as the term suggests date add, you're adding some interval to a specific date. Okay, so it's giving an example as well. So date add, so I'm adding, what am I adding? Month, right? So the first field that we see is month. How many months are we adding? That is what you see next, that is your interval. So you're adding three months to this date. That's your third option within date add. Okay, so if you're adding three months to this date, your date will be 2004, same year. You're adding three months. So to 04, I'm adding three. So it becomes 07 and then the day is 15. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Date diff, again, as the term suggests, you would be subtracting that interval. Uh, you'd be subtracting that particular interval from dates. Okay, so looking at example, date diff, you're subtracting month from these two dates. Okay, again, just go through the description if you need a better understanding. But if I have to subtract months from these two dates, I would be getting a minus three, right? So a minus three in this case, because I'm doing the third one minus the second element that's in date diff, okay? Next, date name. 
so it returns a part of the given date as a string so whatever my first is i want to know which month does this date come from from the second one right so which month is it 04 is nothing but january february march april right so 4 represents april it returns the name right so that's why it's called date name now date parse it converts a string to a date in a specified format so for example if i date parse the string value 15 dot april dot 2004 so this is actually a string it's still not recognized as a date but if i use date parse it will then return the output as a date field so 15 april which is 04 2004 okay similarly go through all of the date functions it's pretty simple and straightforward okay i see year so i will use year for calculating year of order date okay so what does year of order date say so my year of order date is equal to in my case 2018 because i want to compute everything for 2018 so let me start typing so I'm typing order and I'm getting order date automatically is equal to 2018. Then you sum up the sales. Otherwise, leave it out and I end it. So notice I am getting an error. So reference to undefined field sales. Okay, so the sales has not been recognized. I think in one of the videos I told you that if it's recognized as an orange field, with square brackets then it's a field in this case it's not recognized it so let me select this and now it's fine so that error is resolved what is the other error now this is a very common error okay cannot mix aggregate and non-aggregate results in if expression so this is aggregate okay i'm using sum of sales but this is non-aggregate so i'm checking each and every row here but here i'm just summing up the sales so instead of using sum i will just simply go with sales and this should resolve my issue okay in fact to counter this error tableau at a later version which is currently available in 10 uh, it basically came up with level of detail expressions which i will be covering at the end of this session so i will walk you through all the level of detail aggregations that we can do in tableau sometimes to counter issues like this okay so here we are saying if year of order date is equal to 2018 then sales end and my calculation is valid. Once I click on OK, I will drag this into my view and notice. So I have hard coded a calculation, so I have created a calculation wherein only my 2018 sales will be computed. And now this, I brought in this, in this particular view just to ensure that my values are matching up okay so if you see 2018 sales this is my value and the same value is stored in this calculated field so now i don't even need to have order date this value will always show me 2018 sales okay so any questions on this please feel free to reach out so this is date calculation Let's move on to string calculation. So um, in string calculation, let's take an example of a customer name. So let's drag customer name into rows. Now here I can see the first and last name for every customer. Now what if I just need to extract the first name from the customer name? How do I do that, right? So in order to do that, so always when you're building calculations, think through the logic, right? So if I'm building a calculation where I need to extract the first name only, then logically I need to extract everything until I encounter the space. So logically, that is what I should be doing in my calculation. Okay. Once you can think through logically, you can always build that calculation. So now I need to create a calculated field where I can find the character at which my space appears. So let me call this as find the space. And again, you can make use of this wizard wherein you can select string calculation now. 
So under string calculation, let me just walk through a few of the calculations before we zero in on what exactly we need. So ASCII, what does ASCII in bracket string do? It returns the ASCII value of the first character in that string. Example, ASCII of authors, right? So the first character in authors is the A. And for A, the ASCII value would be 97. Okay. Now, what does character do? Something similar to ASCII, right? But it, uh, whatever ASCII value you have within the brackets, it throws out the character for you. So it's basically doing the reverse. Okay. So character 65 throws out a capital A. Now, if you want to check if your string contains few characters, right? You would use contains function. So returns true if the string contains the substring. So here example contains calculation comma ALCU. So if you see ALCU, it's actually present in the term calculation. So this returns true. Similar to contains, ends with always looks for the end of the string, right? It can't be in the middle, it can't be in the beginning. So returns true of the string ends with a substring, right? So ends with calculation. Calculation ends with ION, which is correct. So it returns true. Now find. So find string, comma, substring. And optionally, so what you see in bracket is basically optional, which character starts from, okay? So here, example, find calculation, comma, ALCU. So which character does ALCU start from? Basically starts from the second character. Now, going back to our problem, I think this is exactly the function that we need to calculate at which character I encounter my string. So what I'll do is find customer name, comma, what am I finding? The character at which I find the space. So if I click on OK, let's drag find the space next to my customer name, just to ensure that that's exactly what it's trying to do, okay? Now here it is actually summing it up. What we can do is we can convert it to discrete and bring it here. Okay, so we'll actually bring it to dimensions because we don't want it to sum up things. We just want that integer value at which I find my space, okay? So now if I come here, notice for the first one, which is Aaron Bergman, it is identified the space at the sixth character. Now, is that correct? Double A, so one, two, three, four, five, six, that's correct. So all the Aaron's have six, which is correct. Adam has one, two, three, four. In the fifth character, you would find the space, which is correct. So all Adam's would have it at five. All Adrian's would have it at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's correct. So as you can see, find the space has done at least the initial part or solved the initial part of my problem, which is finding the space. Now I need to extract all the characters till I encounter the space. Okay. Again, how would I do that? Right click, create calculated field, go to string functions. Okay. Just like find. So you know, of course, you wouldn't know all of these functions. Like I said, you can go through them once. It would be very, very, very beneficial. But uh, if I just scroll through it, okay, I could just guess that maybe left function would help. Right? So finding left of my customer name and you count until you find the space. Minus one, right? Because I don't want to include the space. That's why I'm doing a minus one. So let's do that. So left of customer name, find the space, minus one. And this will be first name. So I click on OK. Let's validate if my calculation is correct. So notice. For Aaron, it's Aaron. For Adam, it's Adam. For Adrian, it's Adrian. So it has pulled out the first name only, right? So this was pretty easy. Now, if I have to pull out the last name, again, let's come back to my calculation, right click, create calculated field, come to string calculation. Just like left, let me try to look for some other function. 
okay there is right right using right also you would be able to achieve the same but let me go with mid right so i start counting after the space so let me select mid so if i say mid of customer name and i start counting after the space so find the space plus 1 and this would be last name i'll click on okay and if i drag this on to my view if you notice now we have a calculation for first name and we have correctly been able to extract the last name as well okay so this was an example of a string calculation like i said there are a lot more functions please walk through each of them next we'll take an example of a number calculation okay now let's bring in row id and let me bring in profit so here if you notice certain profits are positive certain profits are negative so wherever it's negative let's assume that the customer has returned these items and hence it's showing up as a negative profit okay so now what will we do so if we want to check a scenario wherein we will nullify all the returns basically if a customer hasn't returned right so that will basically be a positive profit so we'll identify what is this value that you will achieve in case none of the customers have returned anything right so in that case all negatives have to be converted to positive so in order to do that right click create calculated field and let me come to number calculation okay the very first function which is abs returns the absolute value of the given number so if we have an abs of minus 7 it returns a plus 7 in fact that's exactly what we want to do so we want to do an absolute value of my profit so i get positive profit okay so i'll click on okay drag this onto my view okay notice wherever it is negative so for example minus 1665 now it's represented as positive 1665 right so that's the same with all cases where i have negative values minus 4 is a plus 4 minus 383 is a plus 383 so if i just remove row id the difference in value if the products hadn't been returned is basically literally double right so if you see 286397 is my profit where in values have been items have been returned but 598660 is a scenario wherein no item has been returned and all the negative profits that we saw have been converted to positive profits okay so again this was a simple function that we went through just go through all of the functions it's fairly simple so if you just want to see some of the functions let's go to the number function abs there's uh, a cos a sin a tan ceiling so basically ceiling of 3.1415 would be a 4 so obviously you're not going to use most of these functions right like uh, sin cos tan etc uh but you might probably end up using some of the other functions so go through all of them just to know that they exist okay um and then there is min max which you'll be using quite often pi power radian round rounding off values that also you'll be using quite often right and this is basically if it is null it returns null value otherwise it returns whatever the value of the expression is okay so these are some of the examples of number calculation now let's move on to type calculation example okay so uh, again let me bring in my row id and probably let me bring in my sales value let me format this right click click on format if you remember the formatting session that we went through if i need to bring in a decimal value i'll click on fields click on the measure sum of sales and click on number custom and get two decimal values okay now let me give you a scenario wherein the shopkeeper 
does not carry any change okay now in that scenario do you think the customer will let go of that change definitely not right so the shopkeeper has to let go of whatever floating value that he has okay so he doesn't carry any change in terms of coins so what we need to do now is to compute the actual sales if the customer if the shopkeeper had carried change versus when the shopkeeper does not carry any change so in order to do that we'll have to strip every number of its decimal value so it has to be 261.00 right even if we add float so in this case we have to check what the type of this number is it is actually a floating value you could also be calling it decimal value decimal is the same as float okay so if i need to convert it and strip it off its decimal value i would need to convert it to an integer okay i'm guessing we all understand what an integer is so if i right click on sales click on create and calculated field so let me calculate my integer sales and this will be again go to type conversion okay here again you can convert something to a date you can convert something to float float like i said is decimal you can convert something to integer which is int you can make something date make date time you can convert something to a string etc okay so we are interested to convert this in, into an integer so let me start typing int sales calculation is valid click on okay drag integer sales into my view okay so first i have my integer sales let me again format it let's look if the decimal value has been stripped off i'll go to fields come to sum of integer sales come to number custom and if you notice now though i'm adding two decimal places it is now an integer and hence it will not show you any value in the decimal place okay so this is exactly what i wanted to do the shopkeeper ends up with these sales in case he does not carry any change so if i pull out row id notice my value i'm literally losing 6000 change in case i'm not going to be carrying any coins okay so this was an example of a type conversion calculation okay so we can just say type conversion calculation now finally let's come to level of detail so let's call it lod first we will create it for fixed okay now what is level of detail like i said right so if i need to fix certain aggregations i have more control on how certain values are being aggregated then i would need to use level of detail expressions okay there are three of them there's fixed there is include and there is exclude okay so first i'll be covering fixed so now if i create a calculation for fixed let me maybe bring in region okay so where is region let me bring region and let's bring in sales okay so i have region and sales now whatever said and done okay so maybe let me bring in state as well okay so whatever said and done uh, maybe i want to calculate a value which is the state value divided by the central value into 100 right of course this can be achieved with quick table calculations but just to give you an example of fixed so now i just want to compute this value this value is just sum of sales okay but if i need to divide it by the value for central then i need to aggregate and come up with a function or a formulae which will store value for each of my regions and hence fixed will be used here so if i right click create calculated field so let's do fix fix it for first the dimension for region and then what are you fixing right so this is a syntax that you will follow so it starts with a curly bracket then you use fixed, then you use the dimension. So the field is appearing in orange. Then you use a colon. And then I will use sum of sales. Sum of sales. And I will close my curly bracket. This should work. So what is this? This is my region 
sales okay so i've used fix so what irrespective of what i add here so my region sales notice so for illinois because it comes under central my region sales or my denominator which i want will be 501240 so everything under central will have a common value everything under east will have a common value okay everything under south will have a common value and everything under west would have a common value okay so this is one of the scenarios where you could possibly using the fixed function now let's go in with level of detail include okay so here let me create a function wherein i'm calculating my sales for customers okay so for each customer i'm calculating my sales so right click create calculated field very similar syntax to the previous one it's the same actually the syntax so start with the curly bracket include whichever function you want to use the dimension which is customer name in this case and i like i said i want to calculate the sum of sales for that for each of my customers okay so this is my sales per customer okay So now if I drag region for example and I drag sales per customer okay now let me take an average sales per customer in each of my region I want to know that right so per customer if you see on an average I'm doing best in east so it's taken my sales per customer right and I'm doing an average of it right so on an average my sales per customer in central is 796.9 in east it's 1007.1 south it's 765.1 and west it is 1057.5 okay so include is basically including the level of detail for that customer okay now exclude is just the opposite so i will exclude now region for my sum of sales so right click create calculated field start with the curly bracket exclude region which is correct my dimension and what is my measure sum of sales close with the curly bracket so this will be excluding region okay sales so here again let me drag my region and let me say excluding region sum of sales you get the same value across why is that because it's not taking into consideration region though i have used region in my view right so if i need an aggregation where i'm using a certain dimension in my view but i don't want that to be taken into account right so in this case it's actually giving my total value barring region okay so it does not take into consideration region at all right but if i add some other dimension so for example if i add state it will give me a breakdown by state right but again um uh, if you notice again it's not considering region right so say for example i have certain categories right and those categories might be common across so notice furniture it's giving the same value for all region because it's not considering region at all right so for example if i take sum of sales now it will give me different values for different regions right because it's 163797 actually in central but now the 742000 that you see is actually summing up 16379720829111799 and 252613 that's exactly what's happening okay so in case you need an aggregation that basically excludes the dimension that you are visualizing in your view then exclude is the way to go to stay up to date with the latest technologies please hit the bell icon thank you